Autosar, explained by Annette Kempf. Welcome to our next session on Autosar Classic platform. Um, what did we do last week? Last week we had the view on um, Autosar in general, at least um, how to navigate through and what the different parts are. And then we looked into the classic platform as an overview. And today we'll um, go into more detail. So we are now again at Autosar at the page on the classic platform. And here we see the current release, Autosar Classic uh, 2311, um, with the high level architecture. Um, and this was a view which in the longer ago past was not available. I think it's a very nice solution that you have a architecture overview and then you can that you can click on um, the different parts to um, learn more. So last time, um, if you missed it, it's still on YouTube. We had a look at the overall architecture and today we'll have a look at the microcontroller abstraction layer and you cannot look at the microcontroller abstraction layer without having a look at the microcontroller the microcontroller itself is not part of autosar but of course it is providing the resources um, which then are used um, within the software on the on the microcontroller and there is a strong connection which will be also highlighted what's inside the microcontroller abstraction layer you have different areas for example you have vio drivers um, where you have PM, pwm driver and so on you have communication drivers you have wireless communication drivers crypto drivers memory drivers and microcontroller drivers just as an example um, we'll have a look at the page of uh, microcontroller drivers and this is this page um, uh, it selected the release uh, 2211 and uh, 2311 um, so you see all the documents which have been either released for, for 22 or 23. Um, and there's a list of the specifications and then the requirements. And here you see the specifications which were released in R2311. Um, we'll have, just as an example, a closer look to the MCU driver. The specification of the MCU driver, I should start at the beginning. Um, the specifications always have more or less the same structure. So the document title is specification of the MCU driver. It has an identification number and you already see also which um, release it was. And then it starts with a document history. Lots of history. Uh, a disclaimer you always have, and then we're at the table of contents. Um, there will be an introduction on functional overview. You have you have to know all the abbreviations and acronyms, um, related documents, constraints, dependencies, um, requirements, and then finally you get to the functional um, specification and the interface for RP specification. We'll just have a very short look. It's it's more or less the, the document structure, yeah? Uh, and I, I, I missed sequence diagram and configuration specification, which of course is also very important. Um, so you start with a general introduction. It's the MCU microcontroller unit driver um, with some startup code description. Um, then we have our acronyms and abbreviations, um, limitations, and then dependencies to other modules. And this is important if you have a startup sequence um, and so on. So it's quite a lot of content. And this is the reason why we are now doing this kind of overview, because what you have here what we've seen here is the overall architecture. 
Then we went into just one small box of a microcontroller um, abstraction layer. And within this box, you find the specifications and the requirements in detail. And this means if you just have a document, you might get lost. Um, and this um, high level introduction has the target to give you an orientation. Um, and this orientation will not be done by me, but um, we will show you um, an extract of the embedded academy e-learning on Autosa. It's a little older version than the current one, so um, there might be some new content added to this, but um, overall it gives you the structure, it gives you an understanding on how microcontroller and microcontroller abstraction layer um, connected um, and which drivers can be found where. So I really ho hope you enjoy this e-learning extract and I will be back after this. The hardware layer is not part of the AutoSA standard. It contains the microcontrollers and on-chip peripheral functions, like general purpose timer and watchdog, which are interfaced by the microcontroller abstraction layer. The microcontroller abstraction layer is divided into six model groups, which group software modules of similar type. In this case the software modules are internal drivers. A driver is a software module with direct access to peripherals. The internal peripheral devices are shown in the hardware layer. The module group microcontroller drivers consists of drivers for internal peripherals, like the general purpose timer and the watchdog, as well as functions with direct microcontroller access, like the core test. The module group memory drivers consists of drivers for memory mapped external memory devices, like the external flash, and on-chip memory devices, like the internal flash and the internally EEPROM. The crypto drivers are drivers for on-chip crypto devices like Xi or HSM. The wireless communication drivers are drivers for wireless network systems, which cover in-vehicle, or off-board communication. The module group communication drivers consists of drivers for ECU onboard communication, like SPI, and vehicle communication, like CAN. Input-output drivers are drivers for analog and digital input and output, like PWM, ADC, and DO. You can use the glossary on the right to find out what the abbreviations mean. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, we've had a look at the microcontroller abstraction layer here in red. And for the next session, we'll go on complex drivers and the ECU abstraction layer um, to give you also an insight on this part. So I hope you have time to join again. Um, see you next time. Thank you. And bye-bye. If you want to learn more about Autosar and other interesting topics, go to embedded-academy.com.